and action. Welcome back. This is your boy Tom Jones, host of the Vegas Sportsbook Show, coming to you with a little informational video about how to bet on sports. This is very basic, basic stuff. All right. If you know how to bet on sports, go ahead. If you've never bet on sports before, you're going to want to watch this. Let's discuss the big four. NFL, NBA, NHL, and baseball. NBA and NFL kind of go together. And then the MF, NHL and the MLB, hockey and baseball, go together too. First things first. You're going to look at the... You're going to look at the sports book and you see all these fucking numbers on the screen and it's going to spook you and you're not going to know what to do. If it's your first time ever, you're not going to know what to do. Here's how we break it down. For the points in the game, there's one simple bet. It's called the over and the under. This is the total points scored by both teams in the end of the game. Whether it goes to overtime or not, it's, it's going to count. So if Team A scores 55 points and Team B scores 40 points, that's a total of 95 points. So the over-under is going to be 75. And if we go above 75, it hits the over. And if it goes under 75, it hits the under. We like the simplicity of this bet to explain to you how to bet on sports. Let's take the NBA. Golden State Warriors playing Chicago Bulls. The over-under is 212. So the combined score of both teams to hit the over needs to go above 212. If it goes under 212, the under bet hits, the over loses. So you're going to notice sometimes it's 212 and 0.5. What does this mean? Well, you can push, you can tie on your bet. So if it exactly hits, Golden State scores 112 points, Chicago Bulls score 100, that's 212 points. If you're above it or below it, you can't be, you're on 212, you push. If it's 212 and a half, there's no way to push, you're either gonna go over or under. Easily, easily solved. Let's get into the tougher ones. Let's go into the spread against the spread once again we're going to talk about the nba first golden state warriors are minus 10. so you're going to see gs minus 10 chicago the advantage team will have the negative points what does this mean at the end of the game the two scores you're going to subtract 10 points from the Golden State Warriors. They have to beat the Chicago Bulls by 11 points to win the bet. Okay? This isn't a very common bet because it pays almost even money. So if you want to put your money down to win almost even money, you're going to take the spread. And if you think the advantage team, the Golden State Warriors in this case, is going to win the game by 10 points, higher than 10, basically 11 points or more, then what you're going to do is take the Golden State Warriors. Here's the thing. To win the game, they only got to win by one point. So the sports book knows this. Squeeze the juice. Get the squeeze. The sports book knows this. That's why they created the spreads. Let's take the football. Let's take the Kansas City Chiefs. They just played the New York Jets. They were minus nine. All right? The Kansas City Chiefs have to win the game by 10 points or higher to cover the spread. So what happened? The Kansas City Chiefs won the game by three points, which means the New York Jets win the spread. The New York Jets were plus nine, Chiefs were minus nine. So, that is the spread bet explained simplistically on this show. You have to win the game by the amount of points higher than what is subtracted at the end of the score. Now, there's one more bet called the money line. The money line is a simple win or lose bet. 
Kansas City Chiefs versus the New York Jets. The Kansas City Chiefs won the money line, although they did not win the spread. Why? Because they won the game. It's the simplest thing in the world. Overtime, this time, we don't really have ties. So, Kansas City Chiefs won the money line, but they lost the spread. The New York Jets won the spread, but they lost on the money line. What's the difference with the money line? You're going to see these numbers in a fraction of 100, okay? So, theoretically, an evenly matched game would be 100 plus 100. That means the money payout is even. If you bet $100, you get 100 back. You will see money line bets where it's negative 300 for the advantage team, the Chiefs, and it's plus 260 for the underdogs, the Jets. So what does this mean? To win money, the Kansas City Chiefs have to win the game at minus 300. Negative 300, in theory, is you betting $300 to win 100 back. This can factor down to betting $10 to win $3 back. You're going to get your initial 10 plus a $3 profit. Now on the other side, the New York Jets are plus 260. So if I bet $100 on the New York Jets, I'm going to get a win of $260 plus the $100 I bet back for a total of $360. So when you see these big 100, 200s, 500s negative, you got to bet 500 negative, $500 to win 100. And the underdog team will be plus 400. So you bet $100 to win 400 profit because the underdog team is not supposed to win and the most likely advantage team is likely to win. That's how it goes on the money line. Let's break it down for hockey and baseball. Hockey and baseball also have what they call the run line or the puck line. This is the over and the under bet once again, and it's usually lower numbers because they only score goals and uh, home run or runs. You're going to see a run line in hockey at five and a half. So the over is going to have to be six goals or higher, and the under is five goals or less. Simple. You're going to see more often in hockey, a negative 260 plus 180, all right, like the money line. Once again, this team wins minus 260. You got to bet 260 to get back 100. The underdog team is plus 180, so you bet 100, you win $180 profit. What they like to do in hockey and baseball is called the run line and the puck line. Did I already say that? Excuse me while I correct myself. So, the run line is minus one and a half. So what this means is, kind of like the spread in football and basketball, the run line is always minus one and a half. The puck line is always minus one and a half. So we're looking for teams that are going to win the game by two goals, two runs, or higher. We don't really have minus two and a half, three and a half, run line and puck lines. You'd never really see that. You're only going to see minus one and a half. So you can bet hockey and baseball two ways. To win the game by one goal or one run, that's a money line. Or to win the game by two points, two goals, two runs, or higher, that's the run line. It's also going to be priced out, like the money line, in a negative 200 plus 180 type of way. So you're going to see New York Yankees. Minus one and a half is plus 180, but their money line is minus 150 because it's more likely they're going to win the game by one in those sports. It's very common. So that's the basics of it, guys. We don't really need to go further into anything right now. This is your boy, Tom Jones. Give us a follow. Drop a comment. We're just building the network as we go. Welcome to the world of sports betting. And if you have more questions, drop them in the comments. And maybe we'll want to make another video later explaining this in mathematical terms, but that's the simple side of it. You can bet the money line, you can bet the spread, you can bet the over-under, you can bet the puck line, run line, and that's how it works in sports betting. Real simple. Don't let all the numbers confuse you. 
It's really simple. Once you understand, there's three ways to bet. Money line wins. Against the spread is a minus point system, plus point system on the final score of the game. Or the over-under, one of the simplest ways to understand betting, is the over-under. That's it, and we're out.